Hello, everyone. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the new free uh, podcast um, app. Uh, anyone can download it. It's on Android and iOS. There's um, a lot of creation tools that you get to use for free. It gives you your RSS code, and you can use it on your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. Uh, you make money from your podcast with no minimum leadership. Everything you need in one place on one app. Don't forget to download yours today, now. Hello, podcast world. It's June 23rd, 2020, 921 AM. I'm just calling in, trying to let you know that everything's going to be okay. Yesterday, we had a little bit of rain. Uh, Today, it's going to be extra sunny, and hopefully, it's going to be a beautiful day today. Um, The past couple of days, we've been out and about on the road, uh, back doing these shows. We were in Saturday, we were in Brenham, Texas. Shout out to Brenham, Texas for showing up and showing out for the uh, bringing out of El Hollywood and me and the crew and it's your boy DJ Tune Up and uh, DJ Track was in the mix and we had a great time. Uh, still a little sketchy about the coronavirus. They say it's starting to heat back up. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, we don't want to get sick. Uh, everybody, please wear your mask. That's all I can ask you to do is... Wear your mask out in public at the show, uh, any concert you might go to, uh, the strip club, whatever you might be doing. Um, stay hydrated. I'm pretty sure y'all guys heard about the whole DL Hughley situation where he's uh, asymptomatic and was on stage and telling jokes and passed out. Well, that right there lets you know that no one is exempt. It doesn't matter who you are, who you think you are, or what you think you got going on. You can still get it. And still, you won't even know that you got it. Like, unless you've been tested, there's no real way of saying that, oh, I'm corona-free or I don't have COVID-19. There's no real way of knowing that because, I mean, what are you doing to prevent it? Me, I'm drinking a hot toddy every day. That's that's one of the things I'm doing, killing germs and really uh, hot toddies make me sleepy. And I feel like alcohol and uh, thoroughly brushing your teeth. You know, I use uh, a dilution of peroxide and water. You know, that's like the old school OG uh, mouthwash. Killing germs is what it's all about. So you make sure that you are keeping your mouth clean, brushing your teeth. Um, and then for me, I don't know. Those, those are the, the things that I'm doing. Uh, hopefully, there are. I really don't know what the side effects are. Like, I keep hearing people talk about that they didn't feel any symptoms or the temperature wasn't raised or, you know, none of that stuff or whatever. And. Uh, only thing I can say is uh, be careful. I've woke up in the morning sometimes because the air was on really cold. You know how it is right now. And, you know, <clears throat> the cold air kind of gives you like, a, um, you know, it makes your nose run a little. If you got, if you run in the cold, you get up, you know, brrr, blowing out fucking uh, smoke. <laughs> so, yeah. So just uh, think of that. And we consider it. Keep your social distancing going. Uh, right now, I'm waiting to see what the government going to do with all the stimulus money. They're, they're talking about how some congressmen are out there taking the money that's for us hardworking or non-working, was working people. And I have friends that lost their job or something like that. And been drawing the extra, I get paid like six hundred dollars a week, and I'm like, oh my god! I just, you know, kind of like, why couldn't I dug into that? You know, and got that that six hundred dollars a week. That right there would definitely give you a boost um, when it comes to your your life. Uh, 
if you really know how to spend money correctly, you could take, let's say that uh, if you've been on it for a few months, then you've been on it long enough to wear uh, like 10 weeks worth, that's like $6,000, you know? And it's just so unimaginable that there's people out there who aren't employed and isn't getting this money and probably should be. And then I personally just need a, a, just enough to sustain myself for some some projects I got going. If I can get this, <laughs> this stimulus money, then I can buy more YouTube equipment, more cameras, uh, um, cars, you know, get work done to my car, get another car. All this stuff makes a difference. All this stuff matters. So, if you, uh, you know, if you're gonna do all of that, just take that into consideration. Everything is something that you can do um, financially if you got the means to do it. And everyone is like thinking about, um, you know, are you thinking about the future? Are you? Do you got some kind of hustle? Uh, I also want to say if you're not registered to vote go register to vote Like that is something that there's no way I keep telling people I was like they keep saying oh Trump's not going to get it oh, Joe Biden's definitely going to win um, I was like but you don't understand the power of the party you know what I'm saying he's still the head runner the front leader runner whatever head runner for the Republican party so they still want even though it's Trump, they still want their people in there. They still want to be in control. It's that way, regardless of what's going on, even if Trump is wrong, they're wrong with him. They're standing with him. So, you know, <clears throat> let that, you know, if we're going to get him out of there, we're going to have to get him out of there almost by force. And that's uh, Amelia Strong. All this marching and rioting and all that, that's great. But when it comes down to the polls, are you going? Are we going to see you at the polls this year? Are we going to incite change like we did in two thousand and eight, two thousand and sixteen? Are we going to? I mean, they say something about make America great again, but the thing about that slogan is like saying, "Go backwards, go back to a time where things were what they were, and not what they are." And that's why things the way they are now, because we're going backwards. And I'll stand with yes, we can. I'll stand with hope. And with every bit of that, it's just the time to uh, move forward. Got to gotta keep going forward. Like Disney, that's, that was one of his things. Uh, keep moving forward. I remember I watched the movie uh, Meet the Robinsons, and he time traveled and all that. And then he went to the future and saw what was going to be. And... Like, you know, vision like that, or seeing what you're, what's going to be, your family, um, all the stuff that you're going to be able to accomplish, whatever, and just from being you and doing what you already knew and what you're already going to do, what you're already capable of doing, like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It was one of the better time travel movies that I watched, and it kind of, uh, it's very sentimental, because... It was the concept of saying that um, he, he was dropped off at the beginning of the movie. He was dropped off at the beginning of the movie at an orphanage. And uh, the whole time, he was never getting adopted because he was kind of a, you know, different, weird kid, you know, than most geniuses are. And he was like, um... You know, he's like, uh, nobody wanted me. Then he got in this, the thought in his head that his mom, you know, did what she did. Apparently, she must have wanted me. I want to know who my mom is so I can find her. So he creates, or and this is the point in time where he attempts to create the memory machine. So somehow his future son uh, goes back in time to help him with the memory machine. Also, this bad guy with the bowler hat goes back in time to stop him. And 
just think about that. That is already some Terminator type stuff in itself, which is great. Time disruption, time dilation, time continuums, time loop, uh, all of that. All right. The concept of time travel is one of the most mind blowing things that I could ever think of. And I'm always going to be interested in talking about that and the multiverse and parallel universes and uh, pocket dimensions and string theory and all of this. And I'm not even a genius. I'm not, you know, I just know a little bit about some stuff, you know. I have my own theories when it comes to a lot of time travel stuff. And a lot of things, all of that kind of is like relatable, I want to say. So... Yeah, we definitely have to uh, do again on that. Because you never know what's uh, what's out there. Like they say, space, the final frontier. Well, we're not even nowhere close to that. We're not close to that at all. We're still on the mechanics of the final frontier being cyberspace, you know, which is fake space, which is, you know, computerized space, which is controlled, you know. You can't control what's going on out there in space because you just don't know, like, you don't know. You might run into a black hole. You might run into a wormhole. You might run into a a red sun, you know, that might affect you differently, like kind of like the Superman thing. Uh, But, yeah, all that makes a difference. And as you can see, maybe we could go somewhere and, It'll be a red sun and, or a blue sun or something. And we will be flying around like Superman and, you know, you know Kryptonian on steroids or something, or whatever the case is. And you just never know uh, where you're coming from or what might happen next or what's going to tickle your fancy. But please, I still like to encourage you all to get out there and vote. Vote, 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 vote. And... I'm not gonna sit there and say that I'm. Uh, well, they always talk about uh, who to vote for. Vote for who you want, but don't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> uh, right? You know, <laughs> just think about that. Um, I think um, times have changed, and t- uh, things have changed to the point where we need a, a real president, a more serious president. Someone that's not going to be uh, cracking racial discriminatory jokes everywhere he goes and talking about countries that could possibly kill us all and start nuclear war and, you know, just being a general pussy grabbing ass. You're like, what do you think is going to happen? And me and one of my friends were talking, and he said, I don't have anything against Trump. I just don't think that he is president material. And that's all is that, you know? Like, if whoever is in office, if they have the wit, the genius, the authority, the common knowledge, common sense, to to act out and be a leader... It's just the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. Leading the country in a crisis. What are you going to do when Katrina comes for you? What are you going to do when the 2011, uh, I mean, the, two, the, the 9-11 uh, situation happens? What are you going to do when there's war? What are you going to do when there's uh, a bunch of drugs have out on the street so bad that we have to declare war on drugs. Like, what? what is your marquee? What is your benchmark? What is your legacy that you're leaving behind? Um, is it something to do with uh, uh, the best or bettering the Medicaid that we have, Medicare or medical system or whatever? Is that what you want? You want free Medicaid? Like, you want the Canadian medical? Then do you want the the the, the European legal, you know what I'm saying? Um, you wanna have a good lawyer and you know, like do you want the roads right, you know what I'm saying? Like what are you a chicken in every pot? 
Um, you want to conceal the chair that you're sitting in? Do you want to be on the next level? Do you want to free slaves? Do you want to stop civil wars? Like, what is your... What are you coming in to do? What is your platform? What are you standing there? Um, like, what kind of idiot comes in the office and is talking about putting up a wall that will prevent immigrants to come in, mainly Hispanic immigrants, which those are the only ones that people seem to care about. Uh, at least in the southern states, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember I saw a guy talking or whatever, and um, he was a British guy. It was legal as hell. He had no green card or nothing. Or green card and visa expired, or whatever the case was. Basically illegal. Um, between, like, but at the end of the day, he's a British guy. He's white. It's That's, that's the difference. Not that he's white, he's not brown. And I don't even go as far as to say that. Well, maybe they do. And like I say, different cities uh, have different uh, immigration policies or whatever. Here in Texas, I feel like if you're not Hispanic or culture or whatever, if you're not in that um, culture, then you pretty much, you're probably safe here. You can probably be from Africa or anywhere and probably never have to worry about getting deported unless you mess up. I come across a lot of Hispanics or whatever that one of the main ways they ended up getting deported is they get pulled over by the police traffic stop and they get uh, you know they get taken to jail for like a DUI or something like that which really sucks because that would kind of mean that I'm in a common situation with that um and they would, I could feel how they feel because, like, like a guy told me, he was like, eh, they send you back, when you uh, come back, they get you again, you might do like six months, and you get out, you come back, you know, I'll be back, you know. But it's like they sending them to these, uh, they, when they, after they leave the county, because I've been in there with some of them or whatever, and it, In Texas, they were coming to get them every day. In Arkansas, they come get them twice a week, Tuesday and Friday, and we're in Miller County. And when they're when they're they're under probably better conditions than the detainment camp or wherever that they're going to. So I think they're saying they're going from Texas County to Shreveport into a detainment center. But I've seen these pictures and footages and videos, and they get like a mat and a silver uh, blankety thing and they just throw it in there with uh, others you know like kids are age and oh my god it's horrible and then they're like so packed off in there like cattle like animals like who treats people who treats a human being or even who treats anyone like this? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter if they were animals. Who treats someone like this? This is like, especially, you know, another human. Like, this is horrible. And this is what you're making, doing to make America great again? Like, maybe you should experience this. Maybe you should see this. And I feel like some things don't change because the money hungry authority out there or if it's not a profit producing endeavor then they're probably not gonna, uh, gonna you know worry about it if anything they're probably frowning upon the whole situation but you can't get involved because when you're plugged in you gotta go by certain rules and certain authorities so again Let's get out there and make a change. Uh, yes, we can. Let's stand it on hope. Um, no peace, no justice. Black Lives Matter. Um, I don't know. I see brown lives out there matter. I see some people out there talking about some white lives matter. And at the end of the day, they talk about all lives matter. 
And I just want to say this. I feel you. I really do. I don't want anyone dying, getting shot, getting killed in any shape, form, or fashion. And I especially don't want it to happen by my own. And I especially don't want it to happen by the uh, the enforcers out there, the blue boys. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, what the heck? And then, the next thing about it is, equality is what we talk about. If one man kills another, the person that, um, you know, they should go to jail. It should be some form of uh, second degree murder. It should be um, manslaughter. It should be, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. Like, you didn't have to kill. You didn't, like, if anything, they should be using rubber bullets. Like, if you're, it should be levels to this. If you're, straight out of the academy and you haven't been out in the streets long, you should be using non-lethal, like Batman, non-lethal methods of detaining and, and stopping or whatever. And you can, I would, if you're tasing somebody, you can tase them all you want. As long as they don't die. You know, hey, they not, they not going, doing what you're uh, following instructions or whatever, and you tase them and you need to do that to get them in line so you feel, and they're giving their talking, giving you lip or whatever. I ain't worried about none of that, uh, anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I understand that there's some bullies out there, but I'm only concerned about everyone getting stopped by a police officer coming home safely. That is the concern that we have. That is what we want. We don't want people dying in the streets. We don't want to have to worry about every time we get pulled over by the police and we die. We don't want to be in fear of our lives. So... If anything, um, there should there should be non-lethal methods instead of force. There should be rubber bullets, you know. All right, it should be tasers, and and if everything is dictated uh, by that. So what I'm going to need you to do is check out the description down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, tune in, check out my upcoming merchandise, see what I got going, uh, no justice, no peace, black lives matter, um, wait, there's more, uh, I thought you said something, you know, all of that, you know, everything that's, uh, that I got coming up, I got some pretty clever stuff going on. I appreciate y'all for tuning in and listening to me. Uh, my rambling of any kind. So, that was what this was. This is Early Money Ramble with your boy Terrence Grundy. Peace.